Oh, we're going to have some fun. First of all, can I just say, as I wrote this on the plane and on the Hyatt uh, notepad right here, so I just got off a flight. I was afraid I wasn't going to make it because we were delayed an hour, and I decided, you know, I was going to wear tactical pants but not tactical shoes, so me walking my way over here was quite the scene. So I just want to say I'm here, and I braved it, so here we are. Because I love you guys more than anything, and I hope that you know that. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. First of all, I started all my speeches this way now because I think it's so important. So the first thing that I want to do, because I wouldn't be standing here and you wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the brave members of the United States military. So if you are, absolutely. So if you have a family member or a loved one in the United States military, could you please stand up? Because you're, look at all these wonderful girls. And I want you to stay standing as well because there's another group that's also important because they protect our backyard, they protect our community. So if you have a first responder, a law enforcement officer in your family, please also stand up. It's almost the whole room. I gotta tell you guys, people ask me all the time who my heroes are. My heroes, though I love them, my heroes are not Taylor Swift, my heroes are not Kanye West, my heroes are your family members. Those are my heroes. That's, that's who I care most about in the entire world, and that's a big part of why I do what I do. Uh, but uh, as you guys know, I live in Los Angeles now, so it's good to be back in Texas. Uh, I know all of you aren't from Texas, but I have a feeling a lot of you are. But let me just tell you, it's nice to be back in Texas because I live in California, uh, also known as the land of fruits, nuts, taxes, and illegal immigrants. So that's the golden state for you. So it's good to be here, I got to tell you that, but um, there's one thing that I know about Texas and probably where you guys are all from is that I know in Texas and I know in a lot of places in California and a lot of places in the Midwest and from coast to coast, there are young women, young men and Americans in this country that love God, they love guns, they love Donald Trump, they love the military, they love law enforcement. So if you're from one of those places, can you raise your hand because I think that you're important. I think you're very important. I know a lot of you don't feel like you're from those places, but I'll tell you from living in California, their silent majority is a real thing, and you exist everywhere, and there are strength in numbers. So make sure that you stand up for yourself, and I'm gonna talk a whole lot about that later. But, um, you know, when I do these speeches, of course, it's not always to young conservative women, it's to all sorts of people, so I always like to issue a trigger warning if anything I say is gonna offend anybody. Um, <laughs> And I also, I know that I referred to you guys all as young ladies. I didn't mean to assume your gender. So whatever you want to be, you be that. Uh, and you be the best at whatever that may be. But, you know, it's really not that hard to piss off a liberal. You only have to do a few things. You have to be excited about the possibility of peace in North Korea. So that pisses the liberals off. <laughs> You have to believe in the Constitution and the Second Amendment. That also pisses the liberals off. You have to believe in low taxes and less regulation. That pisses liberals off, so don't talk about those things. <laughs> uh, you have to love the military and love law enforcement. That really pisses the liberals off more than anything. But the real thing that pisses them off, besides reminding them that Donald Trump is their president, what really pisses them off is when you love this flag and you love the national anthem and you love your country. So if you want to piss off a liberal, love your damn country because nothing will drive them more crazy than that, I promise you. And they can say it's not true, but if you go on Twitter, you know it's true. I've never seen so many liberals try to defend the dis disrespect and disparagement of that flag and national anthem and our military and our law enforcement. I've never seen a group of people try to defend that so much as I see liberals do it on a daily basis. So if they say that they love this country, boy, I sure hope they do, because I hope we all do. But uh, looking from their past, their track record, and what seems to be their agenda for 2018 and 2020, I'm not buying it. But, uh, you know, the importance of you guys being here besides just a sisterhood and all of you guys coming together, it's the importance of your voice and it's the strength in your voice because we've got big battles coming up. I know a lot of you are probably too young to vote, but you may be getting ready to vote. And I know that there are other young activists out there that are telling you that voting is so important, and it is. I agree with them on that. But we've got people out there, a lot of people, they're 
probably fewer than they think that there are, but there are people that are led by the likes of David Hogg who thinks that we're going to march out and we're going to vote to restrict our freedoms and our liberties. So we need to counter that. That's the first thing we need to do is counter that. But we're not liberals, so we don't silence people. We don't believe in silencing people like David Hogg. We believe in challenging people like David Hogg. And if anyone tells you, especially you young ladies in this room, that you can't challenge David Hogg because he's a kid, you say, uh-uh, we don't play that game. We're going to challenge David Hogg. We're going to challenge the rest of them because your voice is just as important as his. Don't let CNN tell you it's not. And I know there's many of you that have been fighting that battles on your high school campuses and on your college campuses, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. So if any of you in this room have felt like you've had to go to bat for your freedoms and liberties guaranteed to you by the Bill of Rights, please raise your hand. How many of you have done that? Good for you, because a lot of your classmates aren't going to be strong enough to do it. They're not going to be empowered enough to do it. They're going to be silent. People ask me all the time, why are college campuses so liberal? It's not just because of the professors that your college campuses or your high school campuses are so liberal. It's because conservative or free-thinking students do not stand up for themselves. They be quiet long enough, and if you're silenced long enough and you're quiet long enough, you start to believe what people are telling you because you become a shell of yourself. I can stand here right now and tell you that life will not be good for you if you're a shell of yourself and you follow the crowd. You follow your calling, you don't follow the crowd. Stand up for the Second Amendment, stand up for the First Amendment, stand up for what you believe in. I don't even care if you're a liberal, stand up for yourself. That's why college campuses are liberals, because nobody challenges anything anymore. It's time to challenge it, each other. It's time to challenge your liberal peers. It's time to challenge your conservative peers. It's time to have the conversations that are so important to have. But besides people like David Hogg, we've got people in our very own government that are batting against us. I don't know if any of you saw the IG report that was released this week, but there are a lot of left-leaning individuals in this country who think that you and your families are middle-class, lazy, uneducated pieces of you-know-what. No, I'm not kidding, they actually said that. So how many of you, just let's do another, I like audience participation, let's do another poll. How many of you come from those middle-class families, those average working-class families that some people turn up their nose at? Yeah, me too. I do too. And remember that it's your families, it's families like mine, families like yours, families like the ones that live in Texas, in California, in Ohio, no matter where you are. It's those kind of families that elected Donald J. Trump, so they better not underestimate us ever again. Because we vote. We vote. And we're going to need to keep voting. That's so important that we do that. It's so important that you let your voices be heard. If you're too young to vote, you can still be active. You can still get out there. You can still voice your opinion. And if you are old enough to vote, please get out there and do it. Become educated on the issues. Don't just vote solid R. Vote for the person that you believe is going to get the job done. That's what's most important. I don't want to tell you guys, I've been on quite a journey this last year. When I was talking to you guys at this time, Last year, I didn't know where my next spot was going to be. I didn't know where I was going to go. Um, as you know, I had you know, kind of a life-changing event happen to me in March of last year. Um, I stood my ground on an issue that I felt was important to me, and I lost everything for it, or so I thought. But I went through quite a year. It was quite a journey to get there. You know, some people can rise from the ashes, and some people become the whole fire. And I think that all of you will agree it's better to become the whole fire. So that's what I had to do. But when I was standing there talking to you guys last year, I didn't know where my next place was going to go. I didn't know what network I was going to work for. I didn't know what I was going to do for a living. But I knew I would make it because I know that nothing can break you if you stand your ground. And God will always lead you in the right direction when you stand your ground. And I know that there are probably some of you in this room. In fact, I know there are some of you in this room. I'm fairly certain most of you in this room probably disagree with me on what I stood my ground on. But guess what? That's what makes us better than the left because we can think for ourselves and we don't bully each other when we have differences of opinion. I'm sure I differ with a lot of you on a lot of different things. That's what makes life fun. That's what makes this country great. We can differ on things. That's what makes this party great is we can differ on things. Don't be like the left. Don't be sheep. Think things through yourself and don't be afraid 
to go against the grain, even sometimes when that grain exists around you and they're your peers, because I'll tell you this, you will not be happy if you're just spitting out talking points. You're only gonna be happy if you believe what you're saying. It has never failed me. But I was on quite a journey last year and I always like to give you guys some personal insights into my life because I think it's what's so important. I could stand up here and I could tell you that I have this perfect life and I never cry and everything's great for me and I never go through disappointments, but that would be a lie and I'm not into lying because my name's not Hillary. So I'm gonna tell the truth. I told you guys, actually, you guys have shared this journey with me in a lot of ways, and it's not a political journey, it's a personal one. My first year at Young Women's Leadership Summit, when I spoke to you guys, it was a much smaller group, but that first year I told you guys on stage that I'd recently got dumped on the phone, and I made a joke of it, because I like to do it. Well, guess what happens to me last year? I leave here, and I get dumped by the same person on the phone again. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's called poor judgment. Um, but. Again, you guys, maybe it's you guys, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you, you go through tough times and the journey is not always what you're doing in your career. It's not always what's going on at school. A lot of times it's what's going on in your personal life because you are a whole person and you have to take care of that side of yourself too. The personal side is just as important as the professional side. You're not going to thrive unless you take care of yourself and you're empowered in every way. It's not just being empowered politically. It's not just standing up for the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. It's about standing up for what's right, standing up for the girls in this room around you, standing up for the weak person in your classroom, being that beacon of hope and being honest about your vulnerabilities because that's something that I'm always open to doing. So I'm gonna do that a little bit more with you guys today because there's a lot of things I can talk about in politics and I'm sure you guys have heard a whole lot about politics since you've been here yesterday. You're gonna hear a whole lot more tomorrow and that's great. You guys know where I stand on a lot of the issues. I'm gonna give you a chance to ask me about those later. But some other things have come to my attention that I think are maybe even just a little bit more important than that. So we're gonna focus a little bit on who you are as people because I know that that's part of the journey as well. So again, because I like audience participation, by a show of hands, how many of you in the next few years, five years, 10 years, want to be doing something like what I'm doing? Raise your hand. That's awesome. Um, first of all, don't ever try to be somebody else, be yourself and be the best at it. But if you want to do what I do, that's great. Just know that it's not all the perks and the benefits. There's a lot that comes along with it. I'm sure you guys have followed some of my journey and you know I'm just an average girl from South Dakota. I never thought that I would go to brunch with my parents and someone would throw water at me and scream at me, but yet there I was for none other reason than I stood up for myself and I believe something a little different than they believe in. And it was a young girl who was probably my age or a couple years older who did that. Yeah, she was a liberal, but just thinking about that, don't ever think that this is just going to skate through, that you're going to be able to be a conservative, be empowered, and no one's ever going to challenge you. Prepare to be doubted, prepare to be tested, because it's going to happen to you every single day. It's going to happen to you a hell of a lot more if you're a conservative, so be ready. You're going to have to be stronger than the liberals. They get a pass. Feminists get a pass. They go on their weakness. Don't go on your weakness, go on your strength. Even when you feel weak, be strong, because I'm telling you, you're going to need to be if you want to do what I do, if you want to continue to do what you do, if you just want to be an empowered young woman in whatever field you go into, you're going to need to be prepared to be doubted and tested and challenged. Welcome that. It makes you stronger. I can tell you that from experience. But there are some things that I know to be true. Um, one. I don't eat with chopsticks because why would I? Two, I don't parallel park. Three, I don't apologize for the truth. And four, I do apologize when I'm wrong. Those are four important life lessons that I hold with me every single day. The first are kind of funny, but the last two are very important. Never apologize for telling the truth. You can do it in a nice way. You can apologize for your delivery, but never apologize for telling the truth because guess what? The truth hurts. Life's tough. Get a helmet. So don't apologize for the truth. But apologize when you're wrong, because sometimes, I've done it, we say things that are wrong. Sometimes we watch the response to the State of the Union address and we see Joe Kennedy and we get fired up and we do an Instagram story and we say things we shouldn't say and we get in trouble for it. I did that, I know. And I can apologize for that because it was wrong because we don't have to do that. We don't have to stoop to that level. So I will always own up to when I make a mistake. I hope that you guys will do that as well because sometimes we get overly passionate about what we're talking about and we get fired up. We say things that we shouldn't say. Instead of digging deeper on the things where you know you're wrong, say I'm wrong. People will respect you a lot more for it and then when you're right, you never have to back down because people know that you have integrity and they know that you're genuine and you're authentic. And to me, those are the most important things that you can be above anything else. 
But there are also some things that I learned over this past year that I want you guys to remember, because if you want to do what I do, this is kind of a little guideline for you. I know a lot of you are young, a lot of you are high school students, in fact, and that's great. I'm so glad you're here. It's so important for you to be here and to be around strong women and to form this sisterhood. So there's some things that I've learned that I hope that you will take with you. Number one, trust God's plan, because it's God's timing, not yours. And don't sell yourself short. Don't think that the bad things that happen to you, don't think, poor me, it's not cute to be a victim. Don't be a victim. That's for the liberals. You're not a victim. You're a warrior. And you're gonna, you might have been a victim at one time, but we don't stay victims, not as strong conservative young women. We don't do that. So trust God's plan and trust his timing because he always knows the right thing and he will prepare you for what's coming next. Trust him. Don't doubt him. Thank him. When things go right, thank him when you think things go wrong because they're actually going right. I can promise you this because I've been there and I've done that. <laughs> Number two, and this is hard if you, you know, you're, you're doing the job that you love and all of a sudden you've got things that you've never really had before and you're just an average girl, or you're an average guy, all of a sudden things start changing for you and you start flying first class and you start doing speeches and you start to think that your shit doesn't stink. It does. Stay humble. Stay humble. That's the one thing that I will be most disappointed in myself is if I don't stay humble. If I ever feel like I'm better than anybody else, I have failed my parents and I have failed all of you. So hold me accountable and hold each other accountable. Stay humble. You are no better or no worse than anybody else. Remember that. And the third one I think is really important because I, I use social media. I, I love social media. It's a business tool for me, but I have found if you stop using it just as a business tool, you become a tool. Don't become a tool. Don't become obsessed with likes and retweets and comments. Don't let that validate you. I have 1.3 million Instagram followers. I have five close friends and my circle is getting smaller by the day. I promise you, it does not matter. I see this and I'm, I'm so disturbed by it. And I know that this is probably, you know, a bigger picture, but I look at everything that's happening in this country. And I even look at these school shooters who make videos of themselves saying how many people they're going to kill. And I find it so disgusting, but I can't help but look to our culture and think, have we become so obsessed with fame or infamy that we're willing to do horrible, disgusting things just so people will notice us? on social media, on the internet, on the news? Is that the point that we've come to? Do we just do things now to become the center of attention? Don't do it. There are some people that become famous for what they do, and there are some people that do what they do to be famous. Don't be one of those people and know the difference because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I can tell you, I can read 100 comments about how I'm pretty and I can read 300 about how I'm an ugly ogre. And at the end of the day, I don't let any of it affect me and you shouldn't either. Validation does not come from Instagram. It doesn't come from Twitter. It doesn't come from Facebook. It doesn't come from views. I promise you this. I've made a career on all of those things. And I know at the end of the day, that's not what's important. It's the people around you. Something that my dad told me a long time ago that I'll always remember. Um, Life's not about fame and money. I don't remember the last time I went to somebody's funeral and I saw someone pull up with a truckload of money or talk about how many Instagram followers they had. It's about the people that are around you. That's what's most important. And if you're a good person, if you're a decent person, if you stand your ground, even when it's not popular, you will find out who the true people in your life are. I've had to do that and it becomes harder and harder every day because once you get to this position or once you do what you do, no matter if you're popular in high school, you're popular in college, you lead your chapter of turning point, you're going to have some ounce of power. And if you let it get to you and you let yourself think that that's everything, you will lose yourself and you will fall and you will fall hard. I'm trying to spare you that because it's not fun to fall. And the last thing again is the thing I've learned in the last year that's become even more apparent to me is that when you stand your ground, it never fails. If you stand your ground and you know what you're talking about and you know what you believe in and you're willing to fight for that, it will never fail you. I promise you. Don't back down. Don't back down because people in your hallways are talking about you because people call you names. That is the tactic of the left, unfortunately. That is what they will do. They will call you names. They call me these names every single day. It does not faze me. It does not bother me because I know what I am and I know what I'm not. You have to know that as well. People are going to say horrible things about you. People call me alt-right Barbie, Reich Barbie. People say the most disgusting things. 
KKK related things. I don't even let it scratch the surface of my ego because I know it's not true. Your real friends know it's not true. When you're a conservative in high school, you're a conservative in college, you're a conservative in the workplace, you're a conservative in a liberal family, people will start calling you names because they want you to stop doing what you're doing because they're threatened by you. Do not give in. I promise you, they are trying to get you to be quiet because they don't like the truth that you're speaking. So they will call you every name in the book to intimidate you and silence you. And it is incumbent upon you to make sure that that does not happen. So please, please remember that because it's not always going to be easy. It's easy in this room to be a conservative. It's not always easy out there. I live in California. I know there are grown women that come up to me and say, I can't talk to my friends about being a conservative. I voted for Donald Trump. I can't say it. I can't tell anybody. We pick our kids up from school and the moms that are conservatives, we have to be in a secret little group. It's unfortunate that that country is this way, but it is this way and it will change, but it will only change if the women in this room and your friends and your high schools, if everyone feels empowered to stand up for themselves. So make sure that you're doing that. The next thing I want to talk about it is confidence, because I think it's something that um, a lot of women in general are lacking, whether you're liberal or conservative. I think that a lot of women lack confidence, and sometimes we think that we're confident, but at the end of the day, if we're honest with ourselves, we're probably not. And that's the most difficult thing to have is confidence. It's easier, I feel, for liberals. It's easier for feminists because they have so many people that are validating them each and every single day. So it's easier for them to feel confident in themselves and their opinions. It's a little bit harder for conservative women because we don't have a lot of us in the spotlight that are willing to stand up and say we're conservative women. So confidence is a huge thing. Um, I want to remind you, and I want you to remember this, and if you have to write it down, do it. Um, confidence isn't something that you have because you're the best or because you feel like you're the best, because you think you're the best. Confidence is when you're not feeling your best, but you're going to go out and you're going to be your best anyway. Sometimes you're going to feel weak. It's about being strong and making yourself feel strong and empowered, even on the days when you don't feel like it, even on the days when you got dumped, even on the days where you don't look cute, even on the days where people are mean to you on Twitter and Instagram. Confidence is being able to stand up and say, I feel weak today, but I'm going to be strong. And also remember this. Thank you. You are magic. Believe that you are magic, and no one can touch your magical ass. So always go out there and be magical. All of you are. All of you are because you're here and you're doing something. You're doing something that's beyond yourself, and you're going to have fun, and you're going to meet a lot of girls. But at the end of the day, I hope this is formative for you because to me, that's what this is all about, and that's why I had to be here today because I, I need to share this with you guys. Another thing, and we talk about a lot standing your ground, but beyond that is being yourself. It's being able to get to the point where you no longer need to impress anybody. You don't need to. You can be yourself and be happy with who you are. I like people who don't care if people like them. Those are the kind of people that I want to be friends with. Not because they're rude, not because they're mean, not because they're cold-hearted, but because they really don't care what the outer circle thinks of them because they know that the inner circle thinks a lot of them because they're a good person. So be yourself at whatever cost. Be yourself. It doesn't matter if even the people in this room don't like it when you're yourself. Be yourself. I know I've met a lot of you that really struggle to do that sometimes. And that's why we're all here, and that's the mission. It's not just about the tenets of conservatism, even though those things are so important, and everyone's going to talk to you about the tenets of conservatism, and everyone's going to talk to you about free speech. Everyone's going to talk to you about being an independent thinker. Everyone's going to talk to you about the Second Amendment. They're going to talk to you about the NFL. They're going to talk to you about the national anthem and the flag. They're going to talk to you about Donald Trump. They're going to talk to you about the midterm elections. Those things are all important, but if you don't know who you are, none of that matters. I promise you, none of that matters. I also want to talk about something that I think that you probably all have experienced, and I hope none of you are, but I want to talk about mean girls, because they're not just in high school and college. They exist everywhere you go, and they're always going to. I hate to tell you. Uh, there are opportunities that I've had in my life as well um, when I see my enemies down, and it would be really easy to just kick them while they're down, because then at the end of the day, I could kind of win. You don't win by kicking people while they're down. I promise you, you don't. Don't be a mean girl. 
Don't be a mean girl to anybody at this conference. Don't be a mean girl to anybody that you meet in your high school. I don't care if they're liberals. I don't care if they're conservatives. I don't care if they're atheists. Don't be the mean girl because sometimes you're going to be in that position of power where you feel like you are controlling the room. You're owning the moment. But if you're a crappy person and you're mean to other people, it's worth nothing. Don't be a mean girl. Even when it's easy to be one, even when other people cheer you on for being a mean girl, don't be a mean girl. You won't be happy with yourself. When people talk to me, thank you. When people talk to me about, you know, the girls in Minnesota who threw water at me and they say like, oh, like, why didn't you hit them? Well, why would I, why would I do that? That's what they wanted. They wanted me to react. They want you to react. You might not get water thrown at you. You might have just girls that are saying mean things on Instagram, saying mean things on Facebook. That might be your water situation, but don't react to it. Don't play into their game. That's exactly what they want. And at the end of the day, when I, I look at those girls, I just hope that someday they look back on it and they're embarrassed. I hope that they're embarrassed by the way they acted because I have a feeling that's not how their parents raised them. So instead of being a mean girl back, instead of saying nasty things about them, I'm going to pray for them because that's what conservative Christian people do. That's what conservatives do. I don't care what your religion is. That's what we do. We pray for people that need that kind of guidance. And we learn from it. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, because I think this is really important for girls. I've experienced it. I've had it. We've all had it. And that's jealousy. Raise your hand if you've ever been jealous of another girl. <laughs> all of us have. I know exactly how that feels. I think it's such a horrible, disgusting feeling to feel jealous. And the moment that I start feeling jealous, I have to shake myself out of it. Because I'll tell you guys, doing what I do, I like to think that there were a lot of women that paved the way for me. Certainly there were. Um, I was so blessed and fortunate and worked so hard to be one of the youngest people doing what I do. And so every once in a while, when other people come up and then they're in the spotlight, I get like a little hint of jealousy and it bothers me a little bit. And I think, oh no, no, like it has to be me. I have to be the one. I have to be the one on Fox all the time. I have to be the one getting all the views. I have to be the one that's the center of the picture. And at the end of the day, I realize how ridiculous that is because it really is a sucky feeling to be jealous. Don't waste your time being jealous of other women. Don't waste your time being jealous of anyone else. Your life begins when you live your life for you. Do what you need to do. Keep your head down, your eyes up, and grind and focus on your little piece of the pie. Don't worry about what other people are doing. I promise you it's toxic to let yourself be jealous. There are going to be other people that are going to challenge you, that are going to be impressive, that you might even think might be better than you in something. Let them be. Let it motivate you. Don't follow the temptation to try to cut them down because it makes you feel better. That's to me what women do, and that's why not, it's not because of, of patriarchy that women aren't in positions that we want to be in in this country. That's not because of patriarchy. It's because of us. It's because we attack each other. It's because we see other women doing well and we don't support it. And that's conservative women, that's liberal women, and independent women. It doesn't matter. We see other women and we're threatened by it. So we cut each other down and that's the first thing we do is we say, oh, well, she threatens me because she's getting attention. So what can I do? I can make fun of her outfit. I can make fun of her hair. I can make fun of her weight. I can make fun of her intelligence. You've all done it because I've done it and it's disgusting and we need to stop. So there's nothing else that you remember from me today. Remember that because it's a really crappy feeling to feel jealous. Don't let yourself fall victim to it because it will throw you off of your game. Everything comes back around. Do you be yourself, be the best that you can be. Let it motivate you. Let it inspire you. There are other great women out there and that's okay. Call them your sisters and give them a handshake. Don't talk badly about them. I've done it before and it's a horrible feeling. Another thing I think is so important is, like I told you earlier, when you're able to apologize for your mistakes, because I've done, I've had to do that a few times, but when you own, excuse my language, when you own your shit, you really reach a different level. Um, I think it's really healing to recognize your own poison and when you're standing in your own way. And you're going to do that a lot, whether it's in your professional lives, in your personal lives, when you make a mistake. Just admit that you made a mistake. It's really that simple. If you hurt somebody's feelings, you offend somebody, you're rude to someone, you overreact to somebody, just apologize. It's so much easier to do it that way. And if they choose not to accept your apology, that's on them. But own your stuff. Apologize when you're wrong. People will respect you for it. And it doesn't matter what level, it doesn't matter if it's a boss, it doesn't matter if it's a friend, a parent, whatever. If you do something wrong, own it. 
it's going to change your life when you do that because people will respect the fact that you understand when you're wrong and it will make you even more powerful when you know that you're right. But another thing I think is important is there's a lot of young conservative women here and we're lucky because we get to be in our own little safe space here with other conservative women and sometimes it's hard to find those other conservative women. That's why Young Women's Leadership Summit to me is so powerful and important because it allows you to see how many young women are just like you. But we're not going to grow our movement if we only talk to young conservative women. We're not going to grow our movement if we're afraid to talk to liberals or we distance ourselves from liberals or we think that they're inherently bad people. They're not. Something that I've learned because I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people is that you have to be able to separate people from politics. I have met some of the kindest people that are liberals and I think that they are batshit crazy, but I will say people like Chelsea Handler, although I think she's insane and I think her political opinions are whack, she was nice to me and she was kind to me. So I will never disparage her for who she is as a person because she was kind to me. Don't ever fall victim to that just because someone thinks differently than you that you have to attack them or that you have to attack their character because people do it to me all the time. People who have never met me think that I'm this horrible, terrible monster because I'm a Trump supporter, I'm a conservative, I'm outspoken. They're going to do it to you too if you're a Trump supporter, conservative, and outspoken. They're going to think that you're a monster. Allow people to get to know you and show them otherwise. I've had the opportunity to do that and it's been very powerful. That being said, there are conservative women that have been incredibly mean to me. And I might agree with everything that they say politically, but they have been personally so mean to me to the point where if I see them coming, I will duck into the bathroom. I did it for two years. It wasn't fun. I can tell you that I will never want to be that person. If I ever find myself being that person to a younger person that's in the conservative movement, I will slap myself straight and I tell my friends to not allow me to do it because it's really tempting sometimes to do that if we feel like we're in the senior position to be rude or mean to people that we feel are beneath us. No one's beneath you. Be kind to everybody. It will, it will make sure that you're here to stay and for a long time. But something that I also have to ask myself when I'm thinking about like what my next move is going to be and the next thing that I'm going to do, and a lot of you, if you're graduating high school, you're in college, you're trying to think about what your next move is, I think the first thing that you need to do is ask yourself what you want. Because for me, I know I'm going to get whatever I want because I'm going to work until I get it. So knowing what you want is so important. Know the career path that you want to take. Know what you want to do and have a laser focus on that. And don't let anyone upset your journey. Go forth and conquer. Know what you want to do. That's probably the best piece of advice that I can give you, aside from all the character things, is know what you want to do and go for it. But beyond that, it's being able to really have an honest moment with yourself and say, what's my biggest fear? What is the thing I am most afraid of? For the longest time, my biggest fear was being irrelevant. I thought, like, I'm on top right now, everybody's talking about me. Like, what would happen if people just stopped talking about me? What would happen if I'm not getting millions of views anymore? What would happen if my followers went away? That, was my, that used to be my biggest fear, guys. And I'm really ashamed to admit that that used to be my biggest fear. I really, really was. I know a lot of you probably feel the same way if you're trying to grow your Instagram, trying to grow your Facebook, you want to have a lot of views on your YouTube videos. Your biggest fear might be that you're not achieving that or that people aren't talking about you are commenting, don't let that be your biggest fear. Let your biggest fear be disappointing yourself, your friends, and your family by being someone who's inauthentic or someone who's not genuine. Um, let that be your biggest fear. But at the end of the day, thank you. At the end of the day, I gotta tell you, all this, all this stuff, all the stuff that exists on, on Twitter and everything else, that's all BS. It's all BS. So have fun, be you, do what you want to do. If they love it, great. If they don't, F them. Who cares? <laughs> really. <laughs> Opinions aren't facts. Opinions aren't facts, so why do you care what people think about you? In this life, and when doing what you're doing, being a conservative young woman, you're going to have to know the rules, you're going to have to break the rules, and you're going to have to break them beautifully, deliberately, and well. So make sure that you do that. And I want to answer your questions about what